Excellencies. Your Excellency, Dean of the Diplomatic Corps, Excellency Assistant Secretary Leda, and future Ambassador of the Philippines to Belgium, welcome. Dear Excellencies, dear colleagues, dear friends, welcome, good evening. 2022 is a very special year because President Marcos is going to visit Belgium in December. He's going to attend the ASEAN EU summit at the invitation of uh, the EU and uh, the EU countries would very much like to enhance their cooperation with the ASEAN countries. Since I presented my letters of credence to President Duterte on October 20, 2021, I have now been ambassador over just uh, a little bit over one year, so I will tell you a little bit of things that I did. But first, I will explain a little bit more about King's Day. Why is it King's Day today? Well, it's not the birthday of our king. He's born in April, so why do we celebrate on November 15? Actually, as uh, Pauline said, our very first king, Leopold I, was born on November 16. And Saint Leopold is November 15. So it allowed to have a feast on two days, November 15 and November 16. The next king was Leopold II. Of course, he didn't have the same birthday as his father, but he decided to keep November 15. The next king was King Albert, and the Belgian cardinal found out that Saint Albert, Albertus Magnus in the Middle Ages, actually died on November 15, so it was possible to celebrate Saint Albert on November 15 too. The fourth king was again Leopold, so we continue, and then it just always has been King's Day. The present king is King Philip. Saint Philip the Apostle is November 14, that was yesterday. But so, uh, it has nothing to do with the real birthday of the king, it has to do with the uh, history of Belgium that we celebrate King's Day on November 15. Belgium is a very lucky country. We have two national days. The other national day is uh, July 21, July 21st celebrating July 21st when Leopold I, the first king of Belgium, promised to uphold the constitution on July 21st, 1831. The uh, National Day in the Philippines is celebrated in Cebu. And I would like to thank and Consul Henry San Benedicto, who is here, who is organizing every year uh, the National Day in Cebu, so the Philippines have two Belgian National Days, one in, uh, in, the, one in Manila and one in Cebu. King Philip visited the Philippines in 1996 when uh, he was prince. I met King Philip just two months ago in September when I was in Belgium for the Conference of Ambassadors. King Philip says he was fascinated by the Philippines. He has very fond memories of the visit. He went to visit the home for handicapped people that was founded by uh, Sister Valeriana Bart, a Belgian sister and the Belgian ICM sisters. And during this uh, visit, it is in Kainta, he received some uh, cutlery that was made by the handicapped persons. And he says he's still using them. So. He knows very well the Philippines. President Ramos, who passed away this year, was the first Philippine president to make an official visit to Belgium. Total four Filipino presidents visited Belgium. During the last visit, King Philip said that the Philippines and Belgium have common aspirations for peace, freedom, democracy, the promotion of well-being and the prosperity of the people. In recent speeches, King Philip emphasized the challenges brought about by climate change, the protection of biodiversity, the importance of multilateralism, the task of the United Nations, the promotion of regional integration, and how Belgium has been at the forefront of European integration. Multilateralism and international cooperation are key to world peace. We condemn unilateral actions by certain states and others, like the attack by Russia on Ukraine. There are ways to solve problems between countries, 
like the Manila Declaration of 1982 on the peaceful settlement of disputes, as noted by President Marcos in his address to the United Nations General Assembly, and the United Nations Convention on the Law of the Sea, as noted again by President Marcos at the recent ASEAN summit. Belgium allocates every year between 500 and 600 million US dollars to the United Nations and international organizations. For example, it allocated 2 million to OCHA, the Office of the Coordination of Humanitarian Affairs, that was first to respond to Typhoon Odette. Two weeks ago, on 3 and 4 November of this year, I visited Leyte and Southern Leyte to visit the FAO program sponsored by Belgium, emergency assistance in restoring food security and agriculture-based livelihoods in Typhoon Odette affected areas. It was the seventh FAO program in 10 years' time that was sponsored by Belgium. Since my arrival in the Philippines, I visited development projects in Cebu, in Negros, in Mindanao, in the Bicolo region, uh, and uh, in Leyte. I salute the work of the international organizations, of the Belgian NGOs, of the Belgian charities, some who work without any official donation only with private donations. In one year time also I visited six universities in the Philippines. The University of the Philippines in Diliman, Ateneo de Manila, De La Salle University, Holy Cross College of Davao, St. Louis University of Baguio, that was a university founded by the Belgium CIC and Fathers, and Southern Lady State University, that works together with the University of Ghent in a program to promote aquaculture. Belgium is contributing 4 million US dollars to that program. Recently visiting a university, King Philip noted that the talent of young people and their desire for knowledge are inexhaustible. Many Filipino students go to Belgium for their studies. The first Filipino graduate of Ghent University was Juan Alejandrino in 1891. Juan Alejandrino was the roommate of José Rizal when José Rizal visited Ghent in Belgium in 1891 and published El Filibusterismo. The European Higher Education Fair will take place this week, 18 and 19 November, in Shangri-La PGC. Belgian Embassy will be there, I will be there, many colleagues will be there. Then I want to also say that the International Bazaar, organized by DFA together with Shams, the sponsors of the Heads of Missions, will be on November 20 at the World Trade Center. My wife and I will be there, there will be Belgian food, Belgian waffles, uh, different things, so I encourage you to, to go. I'd like to end my speech by thanking everybody who worked hard to make this event possible, including the staff of the residents, the staff of the embassy, and all those who worked behind the scenes. Thank you very much.